Okay, so now um, we want to talk about estimating area, and there are many ways to do it. Uh, estimating uh, area. So lots of ways to do it, but we're going to look at one particular way um, that uh, can be very helpful, and uh, uh, especially with really weird shaped regions. Um, and so you know, suppose I have something that looks like this, and I say, well, what's the area? Well, I don't know, okay? Uh, but what I could do is I could surround it by something I know the area of. So suppose I surrounded it by something, uh, a rectangle that was four by five. So I know the big area is equal to 4 times 5, or 20 square units. And now, let's just randomly start throwing a bunch of darts at this thing. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And according to this, those uh, 10, so there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, eight, nine, ten, what I see is that um, I, I threw ten darts, three of ten are in my area. So I'm going to guess that my area is three-tenths of the rectangle. Now, there are some assumptions I need to, to, to really believe that. So, um, uh, the, well, really, the main assumption, okay, so that's, there we go, assumptions. Okay, my, my dots or darts, uh, dots, darts, are uh, uniformly, uniformly, uh, random, uh, randomly uh, thrown in the big area. Now, what that means is it doesn't mean that they end up in a nice pattern uh, by uniformly, uh, randomly thrown. But what it means is that if I threw enough dots, they then they would look evenly distributed throughout the whole big rectangle. Okay, so if I threw enough of them, but only throwing 10, well, you know, it, they might be all clumped toward one area or something like that. So only throwing 10, I might get a very bad answer. Okay, but what would my answer be? Well, then my, my other thing is, my other assumption is that um, the proportion... of dots um, in the area uh, of interest, okay, or my area that I'm trying to get, that proportion of dots is um, the same as the ratio uh, there we go, ratio of um, the small area or my area of interest 
uh, to the large area. Now, those are both assumptions. I mean, they might not be true, but, you know, I, I think they are. If the dots are randomly thrown, then, then I think that's what's going to happen. So what does that say? Well, I got 3 out of 10 in my area of interest, which means my area divided by um, the 20, which was the area of the big rectangle, 20 right there, um, those two things should be equal. Now, uh, you know, a little bit of algebra, I multiply both sides by 20, and I'm going to rewrite these on the other, each on the other side. So I've got my area over 20 is equal to 3 over 10, and so my area is equal to 3 over 10 times 20, or 6. Okay, so that's my estimate, is that it is 6 square units. Now, how do I get a better estimate, um, or a more reliable estimate? I start throwing a whole bunch more dots. And, you know, and again, keep them random, you know, and maybe at this point, you know, so now I've thrown maybe 100 uh, darts, okay, or randomly put 100 dots in there, and, um, and uh, out of those, uh, maybe what I find is uh, 42, and 42 are inside my area. Well, so now what that says is my area divided by the 20. Uh, should be the same as 42 over 100. And so now uh, I get my area is 42 uh, times, or well, divided by 100 times 20. Uh, 20 over 100 is 1 fifth. And so, you know, if you want, you can put it in a calculator, but I believe you get 8.4 uh, square units. Okay, so my original estimate was 6 square units. Then I used 100, I got 8.4 square units. And, you know, perhaps I could use 1,000 and, you know, and I, uh, maybe I get um, something like, uh, you know, again, my area so now I use a thousand, and you know the my area over twenty is always the same because the big rectangle never changed. Um, but maybe over a thousand, you know, maybe I got three thousand five hundred and eighty-two. Uh, oh, that would be more than a thousand. Not very good with numbers. Sorry about that. So uh, over a thousand, maybe I got. Um, uh, 352 over 1,000. And so now, you know, if I do that arithmetic and algebra, I get my area is uh, 352 over 1,000 times 20. And uh, if you evaluate that, uh, you should get, what, 7 point, um, uh, what is that, 7 point, I don't have my calculator in, in here with me, and I, like I say, I'm not very good with numbers, so, um, uh, 7, I guess you get 250, so uh, 7.04, I think you get, you all can check me. Um, shout really loud. It's hard to hear you through the video uh, if I'm wrong, but I think you get 704.
a 7.04 squared units. And so notice if these were really the numbers I got, so I'm just picking numbers out of the air, really. Um, but, you know, I got a 6 uh, the first time. And then uh, I used 100, I got 8.4, uh, which was much bigger. Not way bigger, but, you know, quite a bit bigger. Um, and then I used 1,000, and it came back down again to 7. And, and pretty much the more dots you use, uh, the more reliable your number is, is likely to be. Um, uh, or repeatable, right? If I did 1,000 again, I would expect to get a number pretty close to 7 again. Whereas... Um, notice, you know, up here with uh, just the 10, um, if, if I had gotten one more dot in the area, it would have been 4 out of 10, which would then have made it an estimate of 8 uh, very quickly just by getting one dot different. And, um, and so uh, that's part of what you're, you're going for with um, uh, more dots is that you're estimate probably won't vary as much and so again if i if i did it again i would probably um uh, with a thousand and it was a real thing i was doing here i would i would probably get a number somewhat close to seven again okay and and that's the idea so um i can i can do it here i had this sort of uh odd shaped kind of thing um uh, you might have actually uh, all nice sort of stuff. Um, now we've got kind of a funny shaped area where I give you the uh, the area itself, and then you go from there. Um, so you know the outside area that you use, you don't. You know, um, it could also be a funny shaped area, but. If you know its area, then that's fine. I mean, the big thing is you need to use something that you know the area of. So you could use a circle um, for your outside area if you know that the circle has area of pi r squared. Um, you could use a triangle if you know how to get the area of that. It's just rectangles are usually the easiest thing. Now, for, for our project, we get something... Now, I'm not going to draw our, our sort of funny-shaped area based on the river, but, um, but our problem in, uh, uh, in the project is we actually have some very nice-shaped areas. We, we have our uh, grid distance, um, uh, even uh, distance uh, shapes that are squares or diamonds, if you want to call them that uh, right we have stuff like that where I know that area right I mean if, if I, I can get the area of, of this square but we have squares that are overlapping oh so now combine that starts to make a funny shaped area you know or uh, you know we only have parts of the squares and so even though that's just a triangle, well, it can be a little hard to figure out exactly what that area is. And, you know, and then I have one over here maybe, you know, and I could have another overlap here. And so this is our problem in the project is um, the areas of these squares themselves are not that hard to figure out, but with them overlapping and not all being inside the main area and, and that sort of thing, it gets a much harder to know their area. And so, ah, we just start hitting it with random dots and, um, and then we'll count up the number inside the squares and outside the squares. But if I know how many I did, all I have to do is count up the number inside the squares. Um, and then I'll know how many are outside the squares. And um, we can get that area. So, you know, you may be dealing with a lot of objects that 
by themselves are pretty simple to work with, but if they're laying on top of each other and so forth, it gets to be harder. And so this method of just throwing random dots at it um, and, and then counting is a, a pretty nice way to estimate your area. Okay, so that is our video on area estimation.